you all for coming. When I started this campaign four weeks ago, I said that I intended to run a positive campaign based on the proposition that a good idea is a good idea, no matter where it comes from. I said that I believe that what unites us as residents of Hobo can be far greater than what divides us. I said that I believe that campaigns should be about the future, not the past, and that they should appeal to our hopes and our strengths, not our fears and our weaknesses. I promise that ours will be a campaign that actually offers solutions to the problems we face. And today, I intend to offer one of those solutions. One of the biggest problems we face in this city is out-of-control government spending. One of the reasons we face this problem is what's known in think tank circles as the third-party payer problem. That is, the consumer of a service is not the person who actually pays for that service. When this is the situation at hand, the costs of the service usually go up, while the quality of service usually declines. And the reason this happens is because the pricing mechanism no longer connects the consumer to the payer. Think of it this way. When you go to the grocery store to buy food for your family, you know how much money you can afford to spend on food that week. If it's been a good week, and in addition to your paycheck, you have won some money with guys playing poker on Friday, you might buy a nice steak and even a nice bottle of wine. If, on the other hand, it's been a down week, and in addition to not winning at poker, you've got the bill for your son's braces, you might end up choosing ramen noodles and cheap beer. But one way or another, you're going to get the job done based on the budget you have. Unfortunately, government doesn't work that way. Because government, even tiny municipal governments like ours here in Hobo, don't have the power to tax, they can decide what they want to buy first and worry about how it will be paid for later. So bureaucrats are given the responsibility to spend money on behalf of the residents of Hoboken without having to worry how much it costs, because they're not the ones paying for it. This gives them license to enter into contracts that they themselves would never enter if it was their money on the block. Contracts with public employee unions, for instance, or private vendors. But this isn't really license. It's a charade. It's a false sense of security, because ultimately, someone will have to pay the tax for all those services they're providing for and all those contracts are signing. And who is it that gets stuck with that tab? It's we, the taxpayers. And so that's how it is that, according to the database compiled by the Gannett newspapers and available at app.com, seven of New Jersey's best compensated municipal public safety officials are found right here in Hoboken, with their compensation packages paid for courtesy of the Hoboken taxpayer. And that's how it is that our chief of police has been compensated more handsomely than the police commissioner of that big city across the river. New York City. Does that make sense to anybody here in this room? Now, the solution to this problem is quite simple. We must restore the connection between the person who is consuming the service and the person who is actually paying for it. I'm not saying that Every Hoboken taxpayer should have an equal voice in deciding on the contracts into which the city enters. That kind of direct democracy, however appealing in practice, rather, however appealing in theory, is simply unworkable in practice. But this is what we can do. We can shed sunlight on all the city's taxing and spending decisions. And I mean all the city's taxing and spending decisions. This is the age of the internet, the iPhone, the Netflix, and the Blackberry. We can watch television on our smartphones and watch YouTube videos from just about anywhere. We've got a 24-hour news cycle and information overload. But it seems that the information we have too much of is the stuff we don't really need. And the information we really need is the stuff we can't easily get. So why can't we post online an easily searchable database of the entire city budget in detail, line by line, so that anybody with computer and internet access can find out how his or her tax dollars are being spent. Why can't we post online all proposed legislation for at least 72 hours before the city council votes on it? Why can't we post online an easily searchable database of all city contracts? 
listing the vendor, the terms of the service provided, the dates the contract will be in effect, and the amount of money paid. Why can't we post online an easily searchable database of our city employee <laughs> compensation packages, listing the name, the job title, and the annual value in dollars of the total compensation package, including health and insurance pension benefits? Putting this information online in a format that would be easy to access by the public would have several immediate salutary effects. First, it would remind city workers that they are employees of the taxpayers of this city. They are, in effect, employees whose bosses are, at any given moment, looking over their shoulder to see what they're doing and decide whether that service they're performing is worth the money it's costing. In this sense, transparency is equal to accountability. Second, it would remind city workers who have responsibility for entering into contracts on behalf of the city, whether it's a landscaping contract or a public employee union contract, that there is, in fact, a connection between those who consume the service and those who pay for it, and that those who pay for it are paying attention. Third, by posting the vendor's contracts online, it would reinvigorate the element of competition in city contracts, as vendors who missed out on a contract would now have information on exactly what the winning bid was, and that would, over time, lower the cost of the city contract. As vendors lower the prices in order to win the contract in the next round of contracts. Now, I'm fully aware that, to some in this city, these proposals will seem somewhat out of the ordinary, and I would be loath to ask anybody to do what I am not prepared to do myself. So, in keeping with my proposal that we post online, in an easily searchable database, the names, job titles, and compensation packages of all city employees, I am, here today, releasing my own personal income tax return, going back to our last mayoral election in the spring of 2005. And I challenge my rivals to this office to join me in becoming truly transparent. I thank you for listening, and I'd be happy to field any questions.